Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the topic is Magic the Gathering dying and this isn't, you know, you can talk about this topic for a while, but there are some very big changes. Uh, number one, the tone on Reddit. So Reddit isn't a good cross-section of all Magic players. It's probably less than 0.1% of Magic players. Most Magic players are casual, so things that make them upset may not make people on Reddit. People on Reddit get more upset, easy, they get upset easier than the typical Magic player um, or the average Magic player. That being said, there is a lot of anger. There is a lot of resentment um, because this is what happened, okay? Uh, magic cards are a luxury item. No one needs them to survive. And during a very critical time for game stores, for everyone where money was, you know, money is essential. Money has always been important, but during this time, people lost their jobs, they were forloaned. And I know when I do these polls, I know a lot of people are lying about it because the data just does not compute. So like somebody had to lose their jobs, right? You can't all have jobs. Um, because, you know, when you look at the national data or even Texas local data, it doesn't make sense. I know plenty of people who were for loaned and lost their jobs. I get messages on LinkedIn all the time about people who lost their jobs during COVID-19 and they have a one year. I'll, show, I'll read a message to you that I got from a young lady today. And, I, and this message is the same. I mean, here's another one. My roommate just moved to Colorado from Washington, D.C., looking for a job ever since she got for loan from her position in DC. So that's the first thing on my mailbox. Here's another one. I recently moved to Houston, Texas for a job that ended up falling through. I'm now stuck in a 12 month lease with no income. I mean, if you don't follow me on LinkedIn, I'm pretty, you know, my LinkedIn is a very popular, um, profile and I get these things where somebody will say mm, this employer backstabbed me they told me they promised me there was a job and there was no job um, it's not good out there like, I don't understand, like, how people are buying magic cards or investing in VIP packs and things of that nature. Even if you expect this to make you money, it's going to be tough money to make. And to be quite frank, we don't actually know how the election is going to go. But I could imagine a election that is very, very heated and that things go very poorly for everybody. Um, you know, there's always that possibility. Uh, we already have riots, we already have protesting, we already have lootings. So if the election, the election makes half the country angry, you know, um, the if the election made half the country angry, then wouldn't half the country riot and loot and protest? I mean, I, I don't really understand, like... You can define it like any way that you want, right? You can define it um, in a different way. But regardless, there's going to be a downfall in business. Um, when I was making videos about Trump's taxes, and I can guarantee you very few businesses will pay taxes into the government this year. How can they if they don't make any money? How can they if they're bankrupt? How can they if you know they can't even pay their employee salary? which is an intermediate, inter, you know, it's not this blah IRS or entity that you don't really know very much about. It's the person that you know that has been working for your company for five to seven years, 10 years, you know they have kids, you know that, what their family's like, you've met their grandmother, they've been part of your company for a long time and you can't pay them. Are you really going to be able to pay the IRS? Are you going to really be able to pay your landlord? I mean, these are all pretty uh, interesting questions that I think should be asked in some capacity. But at the end of the day, like, what is the correct answer? I don't think there is a correct answer. So in a time 
of great need, instead of showing compassion by making cheaper magic cards or making a more affordable game, you know, you, you could still have the same VIP pack, just don't make it $125 a pack. You can still include people for a game that's so inclusive in terms of trans binary you know black lives matter they try to pretend that they care about that um they are very exclusive depending on money right so whether or not you can play uh, with some you know whether or not you can win which is a big deal here because it's magic players is wholly dependent on whether or not you spend money which should not i mean the history of histories, it has not been blacks against whites or whites against blacks or religion. It has been classism, I think, in my opinion. Class warfare. Where people of all genders, of all religion, of all they're meant they're made to fight each other for these scraps while you know people who are billionaires don't pay any taxes. And while companies like GE don't pay any taxes, they get they get tax credit. Congrats to them. So every tax season, they make money. Fantastic. That's what Wizard of the Coast is doing. And I think I've been very clear about this from the very beginning, that they don't actually care about these topics of binary, non-binary. I mean, think about how they handled the Black Lives Matter topic. They hashtagged it. They tweeted it. They promoted it. And then it became really apparent that there were no African Americans. Have they hired more African Americans since that came out? I would say no, but I can tell you that a African American trans individual that work in Dungeons and Dragons basically is a walking advertisement not for a minority to work at Wizard of the Coast because of how they will steal your ideas how they will smile at you while stealing your ideas and how they will ignore you when you bring up issues that they need to hear. So I would say it's a reverse. They, I mean, I can't imagine they found another, uh, a, a, another African-American non-binary to replace the guy with or the non-binary with. And I think that's a big loss to them. Um, that is a big loss um, because that guy... That, that non-binary seemed to be a really great employee. I would hire him. I mean, you want your employees to be proactive and tell you about the problems that clearly happen. And again, like, you know, stealing people's ideas and that's just not a good culture. And I don't really see why they would promote something like that because then people won't have ideas anymore because they'll just get stolen and given to their white male colleagues. So... Back to the main issue at hand, um, there is a very, very interesting um, thing at play. And what is at play here is you have unqualified people for their jobs. Like I had to hire people. Not everyone I hire is qualified. Not everyone I hire is a good worker. One of the people we recently hired, she was late four days in a row. The first day she was late over an hour. Uh, the second day, she was late about 20 minutes. Third day, she was late again over an hour. And fourth day, she was late 10 minutes. And the excuses range from I needed to get dressed to I needed to pump gas in my car to I needed to eat breakfast. And she assumed, and I have the email version of proof of this, that she would be paid to be late every single day. Uh, and eventually on Friday, I let her work at home. And she said that she worked 15 hours at home, but later I confirmed my clients and I, you know, and basically she admitted that she didn't work 15 hours at home. She worked only at most nine hours at home, at most. Um, and that was me being generous, which I know she didn't work nine hours at home. I know that out of the 15 hours she posted on the Excel spreadsheet, she tried to delete, but because it was on Google Sheets, you can see the revision of it. Um, none of that made none of that work made any sense. And let me just be frank. It was uh, I didn't even let her go because I would have kept her for thirty days, but she had a fit and created her own rival marketing agency. So people are very entitled, 
And that's what I imagine is happening at Wizards of the Coast is that they just have a bunch of employees like my former employee that started her own agency. Very entitled people with very little talent and very little um, ability to actually get things done. Anyway, hi guys.